and so dear students will begin with our national symbol and we'll look at some definitions as usual the social studies there are a lot of definitions that you have to give to score some points for yourself so as good social studies students let's look at some of these so we have symbols of national unity when we talk about the symbols of national unity we break this into two we have symbols and then we define national unity so a symbol is any object material drawing or writing which is used to represent any idea or message so a symbol any object material drawing or writing that represents an idea or a message so you are sending a message to someone there are times even you as children you know more about how to use this um, social media platform whatsapp and facebook and instagram you have what you call emojis all those emojis that you use to communicate they actually send a certain message so you know what you type and then what you put there and what the emoji represents so that could be taken as a symbol all right so when we look at the other part of the subtopic national unity okay so it's a, a sense of togetherness that exists between a group of people from different backgrounds who have come to believe that they are one people with a common destiny they have come together a group of people they are different backgrounds now this uh, these backgrounds could, could be religious backgrounds uh, cultural backgrounds it could also be social and then we can also talk about political backgrounds somebody belongs to party a another belongs to party b but because we are all doing something in the interest of the nation or always i tell you student that the nation refers to the people so we have become one and we believe that either party b or party a we are still one whether you attend church a or church b we are still one whether you um, belong to this particular ethnic group or this ethnic group B or C we are still one people when we have that sense and we begin to think consciously in that manner then we are actually promoting national unity so that is the defin definition for national unity so when we put all together symbol of national unity could mean that the materials or the writings or the ideas, the objects that represent our togetherness, that is how you can put them. Symbols of national unity. The material objects, writings, or any form of um, replica, something that represents something, that we, anytime those people who have come together, when they see it, they know this belongs to us, not for me alone so we all become united by that particular symbol so as a nation ghana because the topic is ghana my country so we are looking at our own country so our own country ghana what are some of these symbols that put us or bring us together or unite us so we quickly look at them so we have here symbols of national unity of ghana so we have the national flag the national anthem the national pledge, the coat of arms, the state sword, the parliamentary maze, the currency, that is the Ghana CD. So all of you use that because you have money. What you see is also um, a symbol that unites us. Okay, so we are going to take them one by one and see what they stand for, what they mean. Because we said a symbol must represent a message or an idea. If that symbol doesn't communicate anything, then it is not a symbol. Okay, so we'll look at the national flag. Okay, so I hope you got the, defini the definitions. 
Okay, so we are moving to the national flag. This woman you see here designed the national flag, the late Madame Theodosia Salome Oko. So you can take note of the name for objective questions. Okay, they can demand that you um, identify the name or you mention the name of the person who designed a national flag. Now she chose to use the following colors. So we have here red, we have the yellow with a black five pointed star in the middle of the yellow. Then we have the green one. Okay, the green color. All right. So you have this in your schools. You may have your school flag, and then at the same time, they hoist the national flag during the time the national anthem is being played, during national ceremonies to be seen that as well. Okay, so now let's look at why the woman decided to choose these colors and then they were generally accepted, talking about the colors. So what do they mean? So you have to know what the red represents, what the yellow represents, what the black star, five-pointed black star represents, and what the green color also represents. So take note, the red represents the toil, the sufferings that our forefathers went through, all those who did play a role to make sure that we attain independence. Okay, so before independence, we were using one that because we are under British colonial rule and the whites were co controlling us. So we used, a, in place of the flag, we were using what we call the Union Jack. The Union Jack. So when we gained independence on the 6th of March 1957, that was lowered. And then this one was hoisted. So just uh, lifting it up to replace the colonial one. Okay, so the Ghana national flag was accepted generally. So we believe that a lot of people played a role and through that some of them died. We can talk about those who were shot, the three S servicemen, Corporal Tipo, Sergeant Adete, Private Odati, at the crossroad of the Christian World Castle during the 1948 riot. We can talk about JB Dankwa dying in prison. We can talk about all the great leaders in Kuma and all these people. They have done their best. We can talk about Kweji Agri, great names, yes, and so all these people played a role to resist colonial rule. Okay, so the red represents the blood they shed in the course of their fight to attain independence. All right, so let's go to the yellow now. The yellow is representing our mineral wealth, our mineral wealth how rich we are in terms of the mineral resources that we have especially the gold also one of our major exports because we have gold here in ghana for that reason the colonial masters named this place the gold coast okay so this represents that and other minerals such as manganese bauxite and so on and so forth okay so the black star in the middle because let me talk about the green i'll come to the black star so we have the green. The green represents our vegetation wealth. Okay, so the green vegetation that we have, talking about how, how fertile our soil is. You know, Ghana, we are mostly into agriculture. So they call or describe our economy as an agrarian economy. So with this, we can say that our green vegetation, the riches that we have over there, in terms of our forest reserves that is what the green color represents so you can tell that um, madame Theodosia salome oko so i use the madame mostly because she was a professional teacher she was a professional teacher okay, so not a designer not a professional designer but she put all these ideas together and designed the ghana national flag okay so as you can see in the next picture here, someone is trying to design um, one of the flags. So this could be easily done by you. So I'll give this to you as a project work or an assignment to do. So you design yours nicely 
can pick an A4 sheet, get your color pencils, and then design them, color them nicely, and then you have your national flag. Paste them on the wall. That shows how patriotic you are. Okay, so everywhere you see this, you know, this is a Ghanaian, this is a Ghanaian. So with that spirit, we have that sense of what togetherness. So you can agree to the fact that the national flag is indeed a symbol of national unity. Oh, all right. So that is that about the flag. So we see that when we are going to play our tournaments, World Cup, and all those um, Olympics that we go for, the um, international tournament athletics, you see that even when we dress in our attire, we, we have to get those colors in there to see a okay, So you see that you know this person, athlete or sportsman is from Ghana. Yes. And we all cheer them up. Okay. Right. So, I already mentioned that in the course of the um, playing of the sorry, the raising or the hoisting of the national flag, we have the anthem being played. So the anthem goes, so in school, this is a usual thing as you are students, so you know more about this. So after the anthem, then you have the pledge. So the Ghana national flag is a symbol of national unity. The national anthem is also one. And then the national prayer. So we have three already. Now let's talk uh, about the anthem so the anthem was composed by this professional composer so we have the um, mr philip Beho himself here nice powerful gentleman so they have original lyrics but we got these three stanzas okay so literature students you know what stanzas are so you sing this part we mostly sing the first verse or the first stanza then we come to the second one. Then we have the third. So God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong, bold to defend forever the cause of freedom and of right. Fill our hearts with true humility. Make us cherish fearless honesty and help us to resist oppressors. So these words are so powerful. So one of the uh, few anthems that begin with God. So it's. I actually see it as a prayer. So anytime you are singing it, you see you begin to feel something moving inside you. Yeah, powerful. Especially when the black star is setting up to play a game. So I said that we we hear the or take the anthem of Ghana. So the national anthem then pa 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 I would have sang along but my voice. <laughs> so we have this as the first stanza so mostly uh, because of time during assembly grounds and then when we are observing certain occasion we normally go with the first one play the, the band along and then we sing along so the first stanza begins with god bless our homeland and the second one begins with hail to the name o ghana and the third one the first stanza begins with raise high the flag can raise the flag of Ghana and one great Africa advance black star oh, oh, to test validity then we go okay all right so <laughs> these are the standards this is also powerful it unites us and we are able to tell that we are one people with a common destiny whether you belong to this party, this church, this political group, this whatever ethnic group, we all sing the anthem. Okay, so that is about the national anthem. It was accepted, and this is the man who composed the anthem. So we look at this one. This has a lot of features. So before we come to the coat of arm, we'll move to this and talk a bit about this then we'll come back to the coat of arms so i would like to uh, deal, with, deal with that one uh, a bit separately from this okay so it's this sword it's this sword so you see we have some 
some of our former presidents and then the current president of Ghana. So we have um, His Excellency Nana Adudan Kufuadu. Then we have uh, former president John Dramani Mahama. Then we have the late J.A. Mills, John Evans Aka Mills. Okay, so he is here holding this sword made completely of gold. So made of gold. So they all hold it. Now, why are they all holding it? Uh, this is actually a ceremony it's so important that it serves as a presidential authority or executive power or authority. So when a president is um, elected for, so let's say, so we are in, this is 2020, uh, probably there's going to be an election. In 2021, the 7th of January, the president-elect will be sworn into office. When you are a president-elect, you are not yet the president. So on that day, you come out and there is going to be a national ceremony. And the swearing-in will take place. And this particular sword will be given to you. That means that you have the executive authority in your hands, the presidential authority. So this is what proves or symbolizes that you are the president. And we are all going to regard or see you as the president. So you see, it is going to unite us because we will see that one person holding this thing as the state sword, as the head of state and the head of government. Okay, so he holds it and then um, shows it to the people. So our presidents have done it and because our constitution states that it's going to continue, so that is the state sword used in swearing in the president or the head of state of Ghana. All right. So now let's move from the executive and go to the legislature. When we get to the legislature, they also have an authority. So the head, as we studied under our constitution, the head there is a speaker of parliament. So this is also the symbol of authority of the legislature. So the legislature, the parliament, so the symbol of authority. So it's a golden stuff like that with a golden eagle on top of it. So that is a golden eagle with the feathers up. So they're about to fly, readiness. Okay, so when before a parliamentary proceeding or meeting or discussion will begin, they carry this to the floor and after it has ended they take it out and as they are doing it the officials the authorities they leave with this and as that is being done is being brought in and taken out visitors all members in that particular room or chamber or parliament house must be on their feet or must be upstanding as this is going on okay so it's very very powerful it's very very powerful everybody must respect this so this is also the authority of our legislature all right so we've seen so far the national flag we've seen the national anthem we've seen the national pledge we've also talked about the state sword and we've also talked about the parliamentary base okay so let's go back to the okay there is one independence act the independence act so just as we have the coat of arms being adopted on the fourth that's two days before independence on the fourth of march 1957 and we'll get to the coat of arms when we gained independence this was also built to mark our nationhood and then mark our independence so this signifies that we are an independent country so you see the star at the top then freedom of justice the motto of ghana which we'll discuss in the coat of arms and we'll tell what it represents okay then we have the building over here with a space here people normally pass it there's a road going in and out okay so we have the independence act that's also one then we can also talk about our currency as for that one you know the currency notes and the currency uh, 
the coins so you have the coin or the notes you can use it to buy anywhere so everybody sees we all use it so it unites us we see it as one okay because you can't use paper and buy from someone it will not be accepted everybody is accepting the ghana cd in our market that is what happened so we all believe or see or regard that object as one thing that brings us together okay so we will quickly go to the coat of arms all right so with the coat of arms ah we'll talk about the features all right we'll look at the features let's take them one by one this black star i think i didn't talk about it when i was talking about the flag because it, it, it is here cut across so the black star represent the link that we have with other african countries so we are the hope when ghana gained independence it was the first to become an independent country in the saharan or the sub-saharan africa so a lot of countries started following the steps of ghana and they also attained independence because they saw that this is possible they could free themselves from colonial or external rule and that became possible so we have that black star to always represent the aspiration what africans aspire they want to be free from colonial or external rule the aspiration of africa and the hope of africans okay so that is what the black star represents so it has a seated on a reef so that beautiful woven basin is there and then we have that so you can see it over there because it has to like comfortable so that it does not fall it does not fall that is the meaning on this shield now we look at the top left um, corner of the shield we have a sword and a staff this represents our traditional authority in one word our chief fancy that was a system we had before the colonial masters came with their own system or political system so we had our chiefs, our chiefs made laws, made policies, and then settled disputes for us. So this must not be missing. So this man brought the symbol over there to represent our traditional authority. Okay, the power of our chiefs. Okay, now let's go to the opposite of it, the top right corner. Okay, the top right corner. We have a castle just sitting close to the Gulf of Guinea so where we have that has been the presidential official pre, uh, presidential office or residence okay so before our president moved to the uh, to settle in the flat staff house they used to settle or stay in the um, castle so the castle was where the colonial master masters also stayed as their official residence and then it was passed on to our own people so they have stayed here for us. so we have that to represent that idea okay all right so that is the the sea you have over there and then that's the castle now let's come to the golden lion the golden lion in the middle of the green cross the green cross is called the saint george cross which you know it has it's connecting all these shield, the, the elements or features in the shield. So the green cross actually is serving as what well. unity. It gives us a sense of unity. It means that if Ghanaians don't unite, we can't actually hold this country and push this country forward to progress. Okay. So it's representing unity or gives us a sense of unity. That's the Saint George Green Cross now this lion in the middle this wild lion when you take a critical look at the crest or the badge of um, the english players or this england uh, um, uh, how do you call it uh, badge or flag or that so you see they have this these lions in them we have one of the lions to show that we have a link with them so that link is a commonwealth so all members of the Commonwealth were once colonized by Great Britain, okay, Great Britain, and they 
are largely English speaking countries. So all those countries have a link with Great Britain. So to show that link, Emonkote puts um, um, the golden lion in the middle over there to show the link between Ghana and the Commonwealth. Okay, here we have looks like a tree. Indeed, it is. So that is a cocoa tree representing our uh, vegetation world as well. Okay, so the vegetation, the green vegetation, the fertile lands, and the cocoa we produce. So that is it. Then we have here we have a, a, a shaft of mine or mine shaft here in the um, bottom right corner. Okay, the bottom right corner. So we have a mine shaft to show our production of um, um, gold okay or extraction of gold and other mineral resources that we have so those are the elements or four or five major elements in the shield okay talking about why did we use eagle I'm sure you'll be asking and we didn't use parrot I know parrot is your favorite because parrot can talk yes we don't need talkatives to be protecting Ghana we need strong um, birds and eagle um, um, is one of the birds that is regarded to be very smart, intelligent, sharp, and can see, have foresight, can see from afar, very vigilant and wild. So we need these birds to be watching over Ghana. And you see how they are holding? They are defending our freedom and justice. So with one leg and then with the other one holding the shield. So it will fall. I'm sure you've heard stories that they said they are twins. They said one is a female, one is a male. Or <laughs> but that, th those are just uh, um, stories we've been hearing. But that is the main reason why we use the golden eagle for protection. For protection. Okay. And then security over our nation, Ghana. All right. So they are standing on the freedom of justice. This is our motto freedom and justice. It came in one of the DC questions objective when you're asking for the motto. It was quite easy, but be careful. Words can confuse you. You can put freedom and liberty and it can confuse you, but it is freedom and justice. That means Ghanaians are free. Ghanaians are free, but in enjoying the freedom, we have to be just in our dealing. Don't enjoy your freedom to, to the expense, at the expense of the other person or try to cheat or abuse somebody the person may seek justice and the laws will fight for that person so with the justice we are talking about the rule of law must be there okay so people's rights will not be abused then fundamental human rights and then good governance democracy democracy where we can share our views where we can share our views and they can be tolerated or considered. So these are some of the um, major features. I think we discussed all. Discussed all the major features of the national coat of arms of Ghana. All right. So get the name and make those notes out of um, what with the discussion we've had. And then we look at uh, some. So we've spoken about the national flag. So you see the black star, the same meaning I gave over there for the black star. Then we've talked about the national anthem. Then we have the pledge, the coat of arm. So the pledge, I saw the song those days, the single song. And then um, when the news will be presented in the evening yeah so let's look at some traditional symbol i'll try and sing that version i remember it so well okay so we, these are traditional ideas so the man called uh, kofi um, um so there's a there's a name like that okay so kofi bantun is a man and then he is considered to be the originator of the Jinyame symbol. Okay, so um, he 
created this and got and that that was where we got the idea to create the parliamentary maze and then the space sword out of such um, symbols so remember these are traditional symbols so we have the um, nyansapo nyansapo the first one is the nyansapo so um, wisdom not so sim it symbolizes wisdom ingenuity intelligence patience okay so because when you when you are wise you'll be patient in doing your your things okay then the sit saka bunch of kola nuts that's also so representing affluence abundance riches power togetherness and unity that's the second one so you see how they are tied or joined together then we have the jinyame a jinyame except god if god is not in this situation we can't um, be free yes so jinyame so meaning that we are praising god we are seeing god as the omnipotent and he is an immortal god then we have the sankofa so you see this when there's a foul turning to watch <laughs> so sankofa so go back and pick what was right in the past and then reuse it or make put it into good use so go back and take or it is not a taboo to return and fetch what you forgot all right so symbol of importance and learning from the past yes we know some bad things have happened in the past but there were good ones too just go back and pick those values ideas cultural uh, displays and then still uh, modernize them and use them to help ourselves in a progressive way all right so we have here nya akuma it looks like the love star nya akuma have patience have patience so symbol it symbolizes patience and then tolerance when someone is speaking to read a person so you see most of the uh, national symbols we've seen were actually gotten from these traditional because the traditional symbols give a lot of messages some of your parents have clothes they use for occasions and then they have these symbols in them uh, so right now you can tell what they mean anytime you see one okay so um is here this one second second last or last but not the least so the living has links with the dead the living has links with the dead so it's like unity and human relation okay so we are connected to the spiritual world as well so the spiritual world and the physical world um, um have a link okay so that is what this one is talking about then we have a saint metachirema okay you see the the saint is the t and the tetrema is the tongue and they are dependent okay on each other the tongue can produce certain sound without the teeth and the teeth can also produce certain sound without the you see so even when you are chewing something you chew the thing the taste is felt on the tongue okay and if you feel the taste you can also chew without the teeth so they have to work together so interdependence okay we need humans we need ourselves to work with okay so symbol of friendship and interdependence these are some of our national sorry our traditional symbols okay so we've succeeded in looking at that all right so let's see if i can end with the national pledge so the national anthem is here so i didn't have a pledge because you have been reciting them take note of those where they are also very powerful so when they sing songs like i promise on my own now to be faithful and loyal to Ghana, my motherland. I pledge myself to the service of Ghana with all my strength and with all my heart. I promise to hold in high esteem our heritage won for life through the blood and toil of our fathers. And I pledge myself in all things to uphold and defend the good name of Ghana. So help me, so help me, God. So that is what I can remember uh, those days when the pledge is also being sung. Okay, so most, most, 
most of you these days what you know is how to recite them don't forget the words are powerful and they are prayers as well all right so that is what we can talk for the national symbol and you see and last time somewhere around last time they said if we have our national symbol then how then can we promote national unity there are so many ways to promote national unity we can talk about tolerance accepting the views of other people we can also talk about inter-ethnic marriages encouraging inter-ethnic marriages then we have a lot of students attending boarding school and so we should also encourage the boarding school system so that our children our friends we as Ghanaians can learn from people coming from different cultural backgrounds and then we can be one that is also another one and we can also talk about celebrating national festivals it's also one of the ways of promoting national unity okay then we should respect our neighbors culture as well we should respect our neighbors culture as well we should show love and care to other people okay we should be hospitable not only to foreigners we should be hospitable to our fellow Ghanaians these are some of the ways to promote national unity how about adopting a common language or cherishing a common language which you call the lingua franca the lingua franca these are some of the ways you can get a lot of them in your textbooks if you don't understand any of them you can let me explain in the comment session or box for you all right so we will draw the curtains on today's subtopic on um, ghana my country which is uh, the symbols of national unity all right thank you